Welcome back. It's GCube Live. This week we're talking Kojima maybe leaving Konami. Is it true? We'll find out. Nintendo maybe making mobile games. Is that true? We'll discuss that as well. Uh, a preview of Indie Week. What do we got? Derek, Alex, Joe in the producer's seat. Hi. My name is Mark. We are GCube Live. Let's go. Big thing. Well, you know what? I'll start with Nintendo. Because we always start with Nintendo. We love Nintendo here. Except for that one week. <laughs> there are no love Nintendo. Well, we have to balance it out a little bit. Uh, they make some waves this week by announcing that they have partnered with a company. I believe they're called Dina. D-E-N-A. The E is small. People spell shit weird. They're going to make some mobile games. They're going to make some PC games. Mobile and PC. They're going to use that to drive the install base on their consoles. They also announced, hey, we have a new console. We'll tell you about it next year. Bastards. We don't know if it's a home console. We don't know if it's a portable console. We don't know if it's a, it's a goddamn cell phone. Although I would suggest that that's probably the route we're, we're going to end up seeing is some kind of mobile device with an HDMI out or, or, or some type of streaming ability. That'd be pretty cool. What, okay. Instead of having to buy that in crazy expensive mm -hmm. cord to stream through a 3DS, I don't. I don't think they're ready for. I honestly don't think they're ready for a new system at all. I mean, I guess the the 3DS has been out for quite a while, but they well, just released the the new one. The new 3DS. Yeah, the new one with the and they they said they have. Um, plans in the future to to make games specifically for that terrible thumb pad and. The Wii U was also 2011, correct? Was it? Am I wrong? I'm not sure, but I'm when, not when sure. they announced... 2011 or 2012. Nobody bought it When they announced Smash. the Wii U, they, they mentioned that they're not going not to either. be making a next-gen. So then they go ahead and announce the next-gen anyway, They're always working so on hardware. weird. They're always working on hardware. They announced so last weird. year that they were converging their software and their hardware departments together so that when they launch a new system, they have software ready to go. That's always been a problem with everything that's ever launched ever, is they don't have enough software ready to go. Then they announce, okay, this this new system that only has a code name right now. We, we know nothing else about it. Hey, we're working on new hardware. It's a dedicated gaming system. What's That's the code name? have to go on. NX, right? NX. And, um... Which isn't actually a bad name for I them, wonder, but... Revolution wasn't a bad name for yeah. the Wii, but they changed that. Why, why does Nintendo stay graphically behind the other systems it's it's value proposition they like to be the cheaper system on the market because they they cater to families and at the same time their primary their core franchises you don't need to have blistering hardware to get across mario or zelda but or, or even metroid yeah, but and let's say M Metroid and like. Oh no! no, 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 no I, I love Metroid on like a high-end PC. Uh, zero amazing. suit. What? Shh. Oh, Wife's Xenoblade. watching. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, um, Nintendo's problem though is is that they have great first-party games, but their third party is they're kind of lackluster. So why not make a system with the capabilities to be on par with the other systems? That way, third-party. Because I'm sorry. There's Call of Duty on, on PS4, True. Call of Duty on Xbox One. True. Who plays Call of Nintendo Duty on Nintendo got butt hurt. Here's why. Love Nintendo, but they got butt hurt. Right. Put up the GameCube. It was, uh, it, it was a more capable system than the PS2. It was right in the middle between the Xbox and the PS2. But the PS2 had all that support, and the Xbox was you know Microsoft new on the block. Those kind of... You got ports. You had all those sports games. You had all those shooter games on all three consoles. The controller... I love the GameCube controller, but it didn't really do it many favors when you're trying to port yeah. something over to it. It, it. it it got ugly for them. They invested a lot of money in the GameCube, and they didn't sell that many units. Well, I, I know Nintendo tries very hard to be unique, but I honestly feel in a lot of their systems, it's it, it hurts more than helps them. Um, for instance, the Wii. Awesome concept, but got boring as Absolutely hell after... Better. Did I mean, outsell everybody. That one concept outsold the world. Um, did it all together? I mean, when the when the final numbers were tallied up, the Xbox 360 I think was sold more. But I, I also the, bought six of those. So. Yeah, yeah. But to me, the the Wii more six? sold because of its its rarity. 
Remember, I mean, when well, it yeah, first it was, came it out, was, and they did that with the 3DS, and they're doing that with the new 3DS right now, and they're doing that yeah. with Amiibos. Had Amiibos. had it not been yeah, as rare, I I really don't think it would have done as well. Kinda to be great. honest, no, I, you know, it's a great party item, the Wii. Yes, I agree with that. Here's Same here's thing my thing with the PS4 when it came out. The PS4 was in out of stock for a year. Mm-hmm. Here's my thing. We don't know anything about the NX. We don't know if it's going to be a next-gen console to rival what's out there right now. We don't know if it's going to surpass what's out there right now. I still think it's a goddamn phone or a tablet. No idea. That'd be kind of neat, honestly, with a mobile device. I, well, that I, a lot of people talk about price, and they say, oh, the Xbox 360 was 500 bucks. I can't believe that. You're going to have that fucking thing for five years. I spend $800 on a phone every year. Yep. Every year. The way I buy my phone. The same argument goes for PCs, goes for, I mean, everything. Phones are extremely Systems expensive. Systems are, all of a sudden, consoles are a great value proposition because they're going to last for a very long time. Because they can do so much. <coughs> I mean, the consoles, you can do all of the stuff that you would do on your computer. So Netflix, any Twitch mm. stuff. It's like an entertainment device. Yeah, it's literally got every, it, it's got mostly everything okay, in, okay. in one device. You can buy. PC will always kick their butt. This is what still. I always used to tell people. Uh, in a past life is you can buy your Xbox 360 2005 and it's going to play all those games that are coming out in 2014 mm -hmm. for that system Battlefield Hardline just came out for the Xbox 360 and granted there's like five people playing it but it came out <laughs> yeah, and the people that had their Xbox if it hasn't red ringed by now <laughs> still playing it yep. you should have seen and Joe's face just the, <laughs> that was great the biggest <laughs> I mean the only really upgrade you need to do to a system is maybe a bigger hard drive now which is something that needs to happen where, where games you're buying on optical discs are in mandatory 40 gig installs. Joe, do you have a comment about Xbox 360 Battlefield Hardline? Were you one of the five people that bought that game? No. <laughs> I didn't buy it. I, I'm still planning on getting it, but I don't know. Like it, but not for Xbox 360? What? No, no. If I get it, it's going to be on PC. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't, at this point, I don't know why anybody would buy anything on this. EA Pass and Xbox One, just as an aside... 10 free hours of Battlefield Hardline. Really? Yeah, that's like 30 bucks a year and they give you a huge back catalog and they give you like 10 hour demos of the full games as they come out. Did, oh, that was that like, is it like that subscription based thing? It's only on Xbox yeah, One, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Why did Hardline do so bad? Because of the well, no, Grand it, Theft it Auto? Didn't it, 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 it didn't do bad. <laughs> I glitched, I'm sorry. Uh, Battlefield on, on Xbox 360, people have moved on. To Xbox. Oh, you're saying 20. the five people playing on it. Okay, I, I missed that. I thought you meant five people playing all together. No, 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 no. Well, I meant like five people bought it on. See, I, I think they released it at a terrible time with the, the Grand Theft Auto update with the, the heist and the that. Heist. Who, nobody's going to play Hardline over the Grand Theft Auto with how popular I Grand Theft Auto is right now. PC, I don't even like Grand Theft Auto. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait for that game. Like you have been waiting forever for it. And you I'm, will be. I'm just waiting for mods. I have mods, no problem dude. waiting for that game whatsoever. You I haven't played it, right? You never played it on consoles? Oh, no, I, I played it on consoles. I played it on Xbox One and I played it on uh, PS4. But just imagine like all the mods. Like I spent so many hours just playing like mods in Grand Theft Auto 4. Like, Sorry. Can't wait. You could have been playing <laughs> Skyrim mods. I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> probably did more of that than Grand Theft Auto. Macho Man mod. Yeah. I saw a, a meme today and it was... It was they were like in space on this planet and they're like every minute here is like a year on earth and it's like well let's just wait here for grand theft auto 5 on pc <laughs> <laughs> that's accurate i mean we're that's that's, that's that's pretty close to what we've been doing uh, that game was announced on 360 and ps3 uh, uh forever ago and it was to the point where i was going why oh speaking of um talking about when we were talking about the ps4 um I saw this new thing. It's it's not new. I, I mean, they've already had a run. They're coming out with another one of these face plates for the PS4s. Have you seen that, Mark? I just saw. I saw. I, I'm not gonna tell you. I saw the whole thing. I saw the picture and the headline. So tell me about it. I don't know. I didn't do a lot of research on it. But what what I can say is it, it's like a full face plate that that has. Let's say like um the ones that are coming out. There's gonna be a Bloodborne one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's a, a PlayStation one that has all the, the X, O, square, I triangle, that. I saw that one. and it lights up. Um, I've seen – well, I haven't seen anything as cool for a system since the 360 with its face plates. I thought those were really cool. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't really do that well, I don't think. Um, they were really popular for a while and then just gone. Um, but I thought they were really neat. I remember buying the Gears of War one for my Elite. 
You, um, the, just the face, the front face. Yeah. So the, the PS4 front... is it the front face plate or is it the whole like that? Whole I think it's top? the whole top. Um, from what I saw the pictures, right. it's, that it's huge, right? It pops right. I off don't know it. how it does it. I haven't touched. I don't want to start pulling things. And off no, of my it's just that one glossy part that goes around like that, right? That's still cool. Oh yeah, I haven't touched it. it. I, yeah, I know that might be what it is because every picture I saw was kind of half of. Yeah, because they, like, they only showed. I was you a little that confused yeah, yeah. about where it was right. going. I did see the Metal Gear PS4. And... I put a couple of pictures up so people can see. Okay, yeah. cool. But that Bloodborne one, I know there was. Um, I think there was an Uncharted three and a um, Little Big Planet one that mm -hmm. that came out and they sold out like. Psh, I think the Little Big Planet you can only get them on PlayStation Store, yeah. I believe. Um, no retailers yet other than that. This conversation started as what the hell is Nintendo doing and it has evolved into <laughs> Bloodborne PS4 skins. I'm, I'm which I'm sorry. totally okay with because Bloodborne's going to be crazy. Um, I, I sadly... to, to wrap a bow around the Nintendo thing, give me one quick thought. Nintendo doing mobile now. They've come out and their stock shot way up when they announced it and then it went kind of back down when they kind of told you what they were really doing. They're not mm -hmm. putting their back catalog over there. They're oh, developing they're making new, new games. games that are meant to drive you to the console. So it doesn't look like it's going to be new feature Pokemon games uh, or anything like that. Is this a good idea or a bad idea? When you first told me before that information, <laughs> um, I thought it was going to be backlog. Is that a fucking Metal Gear skin? And, oh, man. I'm going to have yeah. to buy that. But... Um, I thought with the backlog and new ones, um, mm -hmm. it was going to be fantastic. Because think, Nintendo is is mostly sold off in of nostalgia. Right. Um, think about how many people aren't really gamers, but remember playing Legend of Zelda when they were kids. They now could buy it on their phone. Um, without a backlog, though, I don't think it's going to be as popular as new games, maybe. But if they're not going to be big name games, I. I really lost some, some it's, hope in this. Um, I'm honestly surprised that they're doing, like they're branching out into this, because I read an article, many articles, about yeah, how, from from a few of, of people who are like ex-employees of Nintendo, and it's like, it's very rare that you hear from employees from Nintendo, simply because they're, they love it there so much, but yeah. um, for, the few, for the few, for yeah, for the few, yeah, for the few people who have come out and talked about it they said that it's a great company to work with but they're very backwards not in not in the way that they do things but like they um i'm sorry backwards is the wrong word traditional is mm -hmm. very it's like like they they like what they have already so japanese then, tradition is backwards <laughs> so so when they do um it's so like when indie gamers go to nintendo and try to get their their games brought out on nintendo nintendo they'll go through a phase they'll go from one person and then if that person okays it it'll move up the tower mm -hmm. And once it gets to a certain spot, if even one person in that entire tower says no, it's, shut down. it's the entire thing is shut down. So it's kind of surprising that they're going to come out with like a mobile thing when they were so – the reason that they don't have very many independent games, it's, it's, it's like – It's it, a money thing. I think it is, and I was just thinking about this. Um, what it is is Nintendo just got into downloads, DLC. Um, think about Their this. shop on the Wii U and the 3DS is, is actually pretty good. It's really good. It's decently priced. But but get this. Apps make tons and tons of money with microtransactions. Mm -hmm. um, if you somehow connect a Nintendo game to a Nintendo app where you can buy things that then go to your console game. Like you can get them on money. the consoles? Money, money, money. Before yeah. I put my two cents into this. Joe, why is this a good or a bad idea? I I want to believe that they're they're gonna make the right move with going into like a the mobile or even like a tablet some kind of like I guess you think that's the right move right because I think that's I think that's the right move I think it can be the right move but it always comes back to um, the developers like they have to get because I don't think that them just developing uh, their own um, like first party titles for things like that is gonna cut them. It's gonna be great at first, and they're gonna get sales from it at first, but it's gonna die off very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's if, gonna be similar to the Wii. Yeah, like it, so I think what the, the key to making something like this work is getting other developers to develop things for their platform. And if they can do that, sweet. Do you remember when they announced the Wii U, they had that press conference in, uh, it, it was shortly after, it was right before launch, and it was a press conference in New York, and EA was there, and Activision was there, and they showed Call of Duty Black Ops 2 running on the Wii U, and they're like, see, we're core. 
where Core Mass Effect 3 is on the Wii U. That was at launch and never again. Well, well, let me say as well, um, back to these microtransactions, let's say um, they have to make it addictive. That's how apps and mobile games work. They have to be addicting. Um, say they put like a, a tiny like <laughs> offshoot of Smash Brothers on there. You can you can buy um, these packs, and in that pack you may get a character. Maybe you get some kind of character skin. Character skin, mm. exactly. And you just spend that money. Yoda. <laughs> yep. I said it and I heard it. I was like, oh shit. What? Yoda. Yoda mm. yep. <laughs> but skin. this this could be a good decision for them but it may not be the best decision See, for the uh, consumers here's the thing here's the thing like will nintendo do something like that maybe will a third party developer do something like that absolutely so i really think that the, the odds are better for them if they open their doors to like mm -hmm. more third party developers or even indie developers but we'll see yeah right, literally guys. like that that's the question. Like, okay, why would if why are they starting to branch off on this? Like, they're doing it for money. Like, if they're doing it for money, then why not just approve some of these indie games and other games that people are really would be excited for, but they're not letting through because they're not at they're not as similar to what they've been done before. They're too risky well, to same, bring into the Nintendo Apple, thing. It's, it's the exact same reason Apple doesn't let you know a, a good chunk of apps on their app store. They want to control your image. Um, the other thing, and I, and I, I we started a new show that'll go up tomorrow um but i hinted at it there but i want to dive into that a little bit more but um these big companies like nintendo they spend a lot of money in just production and advertising and everything so for them to take a risk on a company like that it's not a it's not such a small thing if they do enough of those and fail that's the end that's that's it mm -hmm. so they can't afford to take those risks versus smaller companies that can because they're already taking the risk because they're doing it sometimes out of pocket. And I yep. understand that, but like still, like every once in a while to throw like everybody about that loves Nintendo is always complaining like why aren't there new games? Why aren't there new games? And there are yep. there are tons of new games on Nintendo. It's just that most people are like they don't want to try because it it's not exactly like Mario or Legend of Zelda. And then they sit there and they complain about it. And it's like, but it's a new game. It's yep. exactly what Splatoon's you wanted. Be awesome. First of all, Splatoon's fucking great. Um, <laughs> I'm going to tell you why this is a great idea. And I said this right before we went live. This is the install base of a fucking cell phone is like 100% 18 years old and up. Period. So if I can hop on any app store, uh, the Google Play Store or, or Apple's App Store, and I can type in Mario or whatever in the search engine, if something comes up and it says Nintendo of Japan or Nintendo of America underneath this official app, I'm downloading it. Now, maybe it's a companion app to a game because that's what it sounds like they're going to do. But if they put like little mini games and they're kind of dabbling in this with the, the Puzzles and Dragons thing that's coming out on 3DS because that's a mobile game right now. Mm -hmm. And they're bringing it over and they're putting Mario in it and they're releasing it as two separate games. Well, Mario and Puzzles and Dragons. It's, it's a Mario skinned Puzzles and Dragons. It's coming out with a normal Puzzles and Dragons. And it's like the same cartridge, two different games. They're they're starting to dabble in things like that. Okay, you this is this is exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. One, two, three, four. This blanket, Angry Birds. Okay, everyone, for a while, everyone knows fucking Angry Birds. Minecraft behind you. That's on cell phones. I just think it's funny that these are all owned by Joe and he's never played that game. Look, it's it's <laughs> everywhere. My kid, when he when we go to the store, he wants Angry Birds or he wants Minecraft. Minecraft you know why? is a huge Because one. it's on tablets, it's on cell phones, it's on fucking everything. And if Nintendo can broaden their horizons and kind of break <laughs> out a little bit and maybe not just do their own proprietary hardware. It, look, whatever you do, if it's going to drive people to your hardware, cool. You know what Minecraft is on? Put it on? everywhere. Do you think the that's, only thing it's not on. Do you, do you think that's a coincidence? No. It's too um, violent. Unlaws. What is it not on? Mythos. Nintendo. Nintendo. Which, yeah. He's one of our, um, our mods. He had a really good point. Um, they could use the NFC from the Amiibos. Sure. 
and dump those into the mobile market. Mm -hmm. you, you can That'd do something crazy. like um, Hard Gold and Soul Silver, where uh, you had the little uh, the Pokewalker. Yeah, you had the little Pokewalker. You could put that shit on your phone with some better graphics. That was by you guys far ever sit on like the washer? I didn't, but <laughs> to make the thing like, yeah, go that's, go. Great. that's a great idea. <laughs> no, I didn't, but I didn't even think of that. That's what's funny. It might be different for you to sit on the washer, but for me, I just sat on it. And... <laughs> Shareholders love it. They mentioned mobile, even just the sheer mention of mobile shot Nintendo stock up 29 points or 29 percent rather. It dropped about 12 percent after that, but it's still up significantly. Other big news coming out of Japan. This is near and dear to my heart. What Most the things fuck are. is going on at Konami right now? Anybody have any idea what's going on with Konami? Oh, Kojima of leaving I'm, Metal Gear? Yeah, I'm going to opt out here because I don't even like Metal Gear. So fill me in, go. guys. Well, you, you, the, you Ko can. Kojima's you Zone can. of the Enders. Kojima's Metal Gear, Police Knots. He was the new Silent Hills. Um, the Silent Hill with an S, Silent Hills. The one with fucking Wait, that, uh, That's Norman still going to be done, it. right? It's, well, we don't know. A riot. So he was, he was in charge of that game. So early on last week, you start to see that in the in the official Metal Gear website, the branding that's normally on all of Kojima's games, the A Hideo Kojima game, was removed, and then Kojima Productions, the name of his studio, removed as a credit. Kojima Productions LA, Koji Pro LA, gets their name changed to Konami LA. What's going on? After a little while, they issue a joint statement, and Kojima says. I'm 100% involved and will continue working on Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. I'm determined to make it the greatest game I've directed to date. They confirm that he will be with the company through December. And then he will finally get his wish. And he is... Give me some of that pizza. They finally get his wish and he is leaving Metal Gear and Konami behind. That includes the new Silent Hill game, Silent Hills. He's not going to be a part of that anymore. I don't know. Is he going indie? I don't know. Joe... You're smart, man. Good or bad? I. And I'll take the devil's advocate. Here's here's the thing. I Somebody, please. Pizza. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think it's the worst thing that could happen. And probably for him, he's been wanting to do this for a long time. Because um, you put up that picture. I think was it was that you? The meme. Yeah, the little. The meme. one that the one that had yeah. all of his cycles, and then like he's like, I want to leave the company, and then it goes around the circle, and then they're like. No, you, um, they're like, but we're, you're going to get so much money from this. And so yeah, I'm, I'm, done, I'm done producing Metal Gear. It's a success. You Here, I'll look it up Gear. so I can specifically read it so it's not as crappy. But No, you but can keep talking. What, what, I, what I was getting is it, he wanted to do this for a while. Um, yeah, just fucking. Yeah. 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 Pizza time. Um, Pizza time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh so fuck. <laughs> All right. The, the, way, the way it was was this is my last Metal Gear. That's – and then um, it's – Konami exec. Sorry, Kojima. That game sold way too much for you to stop. I'll show them. I'll make the best Metal Gear game ever. Then I can stop. And then the cycle just repeats. Just super like that Mega 64 video I sent you. Yeah, the, that was hilarious. The Sakaguchi one. Oh, wait. What, where the hell did the pizza go? Diff, so bring it back. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, and, and, I'll, and again, I'll, I'll play devil's advocate with you. Good or bad and why? I think for Kojima, Metal Gear Solid Five aside, obviously. Yeah, I think for Kojima himself, great. I mean, the guy's been working on these games for years, and I mean, at, at a certain point, you, you kind of want to stop and do your own thing, and I get that. Um, for the consumer, us, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think I think in, what's going to end up happening is what usually happens when a big change like this happens. Um, as consumers, we're probably going to see the next guy come in have the expectations that Kojima left behind and he's either A, going to fall short or he's going to surpass it or kind of meet it there in between. But um, I think as a whole, I think this is probably going to be a pretty good thing for Konami. I think mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm curious to see what direction they're going to take games like that. I don't think they're going to stop making the games just because he's not there. They're not going to stop making so. Metal Gear. That Metal Gear is, is one of Konami's biggest franchises. And it's probably, I mean, if if Kojima is like really tired of making the games like he really wants out or he really wants a break if they're going to keep forcing him to make them like he's probably his quality is going to go down if they keep making him make those games has it though I'm I don't play I'm him. sure has, his, has the quality no. from Metal Every, Gear 
every fucking one of them has been better than the last and that's the thing metal gear solid 4 was really convoluted and he like the story was just like the saddest thing and snake was old and they were gonna kill him off in the game because he's like i never want to make another one of these games again kill him so the entire game is kind of like a parallel to how he actually feels during the development of this game snake doesn't want to fight he he just he has to be being dragged back in as an old man that's how kojima felt he's coming out with the phantom pain he's reinvigorated this is gonna be a great game I, for one, never want to play a Metal Gear game that's not directed by Kojima. Those are his characters. Those are that. That's his story. I don't want to see them add to the canon. Now, reboot. His legacy. Yeah, exactly. Maybe a reboot, but I don't want to see the core story touched by anybody else. It's his story. I was really looking forward to another Zone of the Enders. Uh, I was really looking forward to Silent Hills. Now, all of a sudden, we're looking at possibly none of those happening or happening without him. And oh, well, I guess since Norman Reedus is in Silent Hills, that's probably going to happen. Yeah, I'm sure it'll happen. He's a, he's a big deal. That sucks. I mean, that's like when your favorite band switches lead singers. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> that, that takes, I mean, it's, close it's to still home. a band that you like, but it's it's not the same anymore, and it's it's not as good. Now, the other end of that, this is just to play devil's advocate with you. You said bad for consumers. I'll say good for consumers because now they get a fresh take on Metal Gear, maybe one that makes a little bit of sense. I'll tell you, without Wikipedia, you don't know what the fuck's going on in that series. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. Though. <laughs> no, no, I, I, no. I, I, it, it forces people who give a shit about the game to pay attention, to pay attention, or do some homework and figure out what's going on. So I mean, it really shows you, like the dedicated fans. I'm not saying it's the best way to go about making every game. You shouldn't make every. Prevents game you like from that. racing through it too fast that too. too. I mean, so like people who like go through it and it's like a six hour game that was supposed to be like a ten hour game or longer. Like Kojima does triple A blockbusters. If he does truly go indie, or if he maybe starts making films, does he have it in him to do something that would appeal to, to somebody on a limited budget? Does he have it in him to make a limited budget game? Yeah. I'm sure he does. With 90-minute I mean, cutscenes. I don't think that's the way he's going. I really, I really honestly, Do you think he's just going to be Kojima Productions on his own? And I think he's going to pull a notch, to be quite honest. He's going to buy a house in the... In the yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think he's just... He's probably just done. Like, I mean, he's 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 written his story. He's gotten his story across. You think he's done? I think he's done. Like, I, I you think he's gonna retire? I think he's just done. Yeah, I think he's gonna retire. I think. Really? If it's like the that... best game, like this, he he says that it's going to be. Right. He wants it to be the best game he's ever Gotta produced. Be. So it might just Gotta be that be. he wants to go out on a really great. Yeah. Great front, and then and just call it quits. That I mean, that's he's a good idea. To do. Look at Brett Favre. That, <laughs> no, no, I'm not he came even back joking. And had a really bad season. Uh, that his last season for the Vikings was fucking awful. That's what I'm saying. He was fantastic, and they they pushed him too far, and um, he uh. Anytime I hear the, the name Brett Favre, I always, I always think of Madden. That's the only thing I think of. Brett Favre. But yeah, that's that's what happens. I mean, he wants to go out on top. They should let him. Um, he should finish Silent Hills and not. <laughs> He could have gone out on any one of those games, and he would have gone out on top, in my honest opinion. Any one of them. Any maybe one of them. He maybe said he was going to go out on Metal Gear Solid 2. He was done after Metal Gear Solid 2. And if they never made 4, 2 would have been one of the greatest postmodern games in history because that story was so deep on so many levels and really required you to pay attention and think, like we've been talking about. And then they released 4, and all of a sudden they, they took like some of the finer elements of 2 basically just negated them and made them part of the storyline like was it really happening was it part of vr was it a reflection of the game industry kind of disappointing that that happened but he's gonna make this one it looks awesome yeah that's what i was thinking is maybe that is a testament to just how good metal gear solid 5 is gonna be um it might just be the top of the ice like it, that might be it. I think I think the game is is pretty much done, and I think they're 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 right. doing some QA and maybe some fine tuning. And yeah. okay, you know. so in regards to that, the um the Metal Gear Five Prologue. Ground Zero. Ground Zero. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I could not remember the life of, sure. for the life of me. Everybody, everybody who played that, and it was relatively cheap because of how much time you would. Rel really actually be putting into it right and it lo it was amazing like everyone said that it was really it was graphically amazing like it, it was amazing in a lot of different things but they also pointed out that it was really short and it was really it was repetitive that was the things that they said about that so going off of that as that's the prologue 
do you think that he maybe put that out there not necessarily to connect it from one game to the other but more as a test thing to see what people would look forward to in the newest game yes i think they're a little further along in development to really change the direction of the game i think they put that game out one to kind of test the mechanics but two to fund the rest of the development <laughs> that's not your solid five i think it was a very expensive game and they put out a little chunk that could have easily been the first chapter of that game if you play Metal Gear Solid 2 the tanker chapter is about a 45 minute thing where you're playing a solid snake and the rest of the game you're playing as Raiden that's how I looked at Ground Zeroes and the Phantom Pain uh, they could have easily included Ground Zeroes in the in the complete title um, and they chose not to they chose to, to go that other route and sell it for 30 bucks or 20 bucks digital or physical depending on I got it I loved it there was enough gameplay in it with the with the like the, the extra missions, but it was all that one little camp uh, in Cuba, and it was all like the same type of gameplay. So I get where people are saying it's repetitive, but it's a stealth game. You're gonna be hiding from people. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of it's kind of where it's going. I, I also think that's a pretty good testament to um, how good Kojima is as a designer because sure. it is never too early to test your game or to get testers. And kind of have people pick at the game early. Granted, uh, Ground Zeroes was a very, very polished test. But, I mean, mm-hmm. it, 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 was, it was a game. It was a game. It was pretty much, it was a, it was a demo. It's about as polished as the Final Fantasy... Um, uh, 15? No, no, yeah, the typo. The, uh, that wasn't oh, on the, the slate, no, 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 but do you guys want to talk Heaven's about Ray? that? This guy? Episode Dust Guy, Episode Final Dust Fantasy guy. 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't, that. I. you know what, I, I completely forgot about that. Do you guys want to touch on that after? Yes, because that get to that. Amazing. Holy shit. <laughs> I was so impressed with that. But, yeah, no, you're right. They they decided to put it out and said, okay, here's our demo. Pay the money for it. And really, you know, if, if, it, if it was a standalone game for 20 bucks on PSN, it's pretty average value because if you did all the missions in that game, you put in about 15 to 20 hours into I, that game. I, I bought the game, downloaded the downloaded episode this guy, then I played and beat Type-0 immediately. And then I traded Type Zero back in for a total of thirty dollars. So I spent thirty dollars for you. Beat Type Zero? Yes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. But um, it came out already. I completely missed that. That it, really transitioned a little bit. No, but um, I spent thirty dollars on the demo, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, oh, okay, so the fifteen demo is demo? called whatever you're calling Episode it. Episode Dusk Guy. Yeah. Episode Dusk oh, Okay, Guy. that's why I was like Ground really Zeroes confused. Ground Zero was something that was sold separately as an open game. It was mm-hmm. essentially a demo for five, and and it, it ends on a cliffhanger. It has some extra stuff. Final Fantasy fifteen Episode Dusk Guy is, is like here is one section of the game with one main quest, a couple of side quests, and let's go. Here's your first chance to play Final Fantasy fifteen. That's been in development for a decade. Summons. So. Okay, you had a chance to play it. I want to hear. I want to hear some some juicy impressions. Holy shit! Um, All right, <laughs> it's show time. Uh, I will say this initially, graphically, I was not as like, holy shit, oh my god, as uh as I have been with like every, every other Final Fantasy game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, mechanics wise, the fighting system, perfect. Like you think so? Exactly what I wanted. There's like, some people blasting that online saying it's a one button, uh, one button fighter system, but it's not. Fuck them. They're stupid. Okay. <laughs> Please explain <laughs> to me because watching it doesn't look very exciting to All me. Right. So how the how the battle system basically works? Um, you you line up your weapons preemptively. Mm-hmm. You can change it mid battle because it pauses the game for you to do it. Um, but you line up your game, you line up your weapons, and each weapon has a basic at- uh, different attack pattern. You can change it to be your basic attack. You can make it so that it's a special attack that you can do. It depends on what item you have as, it, uh, yeah, equipped as well. It also depends the on the items. Um, you have, so far, they show one summon, I think, in the demo. I've we just seen one. one. I've only seen one. It's an epic-ass summon, but it's Rama. just one. Um, say what? Rama. Mm-hmm. Is that? That's yeah. his name. Really? Yep. Really? Yep. So it's just like that? Indian. Rama. <laughs> Maybe he's Indian. That's, that's Rama. He looks like God. Yeah, he's I think he is God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Uh, if you got a video of that, then we can talk about that right now. Actually, gee, if I can find that in a second. But um, it's it's a very polished game. The only thing that kind of made me upset is the whole point of the game was to not have a car, and then they gave you the car at the end of the game. I really want to drive the car. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Um, it is what it is. They didn't even let you re- use the chocobos. You, the, no. the, the battle system, though, I mean, you explained that, but how is it not a one 
one button mash. It is if you've ever played um God, what was the name of that game? They did it in Project uh Project X Zone. Remember that, that 3DS game that like meshed all the different Capcom and, like, mm, uh, I know I, what you're talking about. Project Cross yeah. something. Project Cross Zone, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Um it's about as much of a button masher as that. Dante it's, was in it. It's not yeah. It's not yeah. like oh I'm just hitting this button, I'm fucking doing the attack. It's more so of I set up these predetermined things that I want to be able to do in the match, and now I'm hitting these one or two buttons to do it. It's it it takes a little bit of thought before you just jump into. The, you can't just see a fight and be like, all right, you know, I'm just gonna hit X. Gonna it's hit X a little now, deeper than yeah, X. Is there magic? Um, there is, is magic. Not it's, in the demo. Not in the demo per se. I mean, like some of the weapons and some of the different attacks do things. Like there's one that's like a drain sword that does exactly that. You gain health when you hit him. Um, so I mean, there's things like that. They showed off, and then there's also, like I was saying before, the summons. Um, the summon that they showed off was kind of a like a, a game mechanic more than a summon. It, it was, yeah. it was, yeah. it was like you are out of HP, yeah. and he comes in to save you. He, mm -hmm. and, and he I don't know if they're all going to work like that. I hope not. I hope not. I think it's just that one because it does, it did so much. Right. Like it, it was literally like a, it, it kills Bahamut. Like yeah, you're dead. Like you, you <laughs> don't. That's why I think it was like it was just to progress the game, progress the demo. Because yeah, I think you probably could beat Baham or the Behemoth or whatever it was called. Behemoth. Um, oh yeah, that's what Behemoth. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. You, they, you probably could beat him like by yourself. You could, but it would take a long. It would take time. a while, and it, I mean, probably it'd still be fun if somebody yeah. wants to do that. But to progress the demo, they literally gave you a God Finger and was just like, "Hey, when your HP hits zero, go on with the story." Like that, that was, was it's it's a vertical slice of the game, so they they kind of took some things out of order, and like I know they give you a weapon in that cave. That uh, is, is essentially his limit break, and it makes like so. Um, your your magic your is, is essentially um, unlimited for a minute. Mythos uh, brought up another point too. Um, the teleport, uh, teleporting, like yeah. dash and attack and everything. Right, and, and that's almost a platforming attacks. element. Yeah, like that's pretty solid. Like uh, like say for instance, you and I are this this distance between each other. Um, I can just teleport to you and begin my attack. Screen. Right, um, and. You can't constantly do it because you have to manage your, your magic, or I'm not sure yeah. what it's called. MP. MP. Yeah. But um, you have to kind of do that. And the other thing is with dodging, that also drains that too. So you, you can't just sit there and try to like block everything. Like you have to dodge certain things. So it's, it's, it's more than just like a simple button masher. I think it's enough. It's not as like thought out, obviously, as like a turn based yeah. thing, but I think it's just enough to, for you to give a crap about well strategy. you played 12 which right. did you like which was which combat system because i'm extremely familiar with 12 right so explain to me it's different from 12 how different is there say, any concepts that are the it's same closer to kingdom hearts than yeah. it's oh. a, as far as the physical combat yeah. i don't know if there's going to be a gambit hearts. system in 12 where you could decide whether or not you know okay this guy's below 30 percent, so this guy's going to heal him because basically you create your own AI. I would love that. You have that. to pay attention to your, your buddies. Um, buddies! <laughs> and make sure their, H, their HP their HP is uh, not gone either because you don't want to lose them in the middle mm -hmm. of the fight because then it's ten times harder. So. so you really turned me off with that Kingdom Hearts. It, um, it is, it is um, an action-based battle system with strategy elements in the menus as mm -hmm. far as what weapons you're going to use magic is in the game if you watch one of the trailers earlier he uh noctis the main character throws his sword into somebody and he's casting just fire on them while the sword is in them Wait. um so yes so that that's a thing like the elements will still be there what we saw was just a very small slice to get us kind of used mm -hmm. to it we didn't have weather we did have the day night cycle um we had a huge area we had tons of uh enemies tons of goblins uh, the battle sure. system that we're talking about, like I said, it's, it's different from well, 12. Well, let me say, I watched a, a ton of streams of it, and I watched Joe stream it as well. Um, like he said, I thought graphics were bland. Do you throw it in him and then cast fire like that? No. <clears throat> if you use the right sword mm -hmm. with the magic attack button yeah. instead of the melee attack mm -hmm. button, it just the sword lit on fire and it did a fire attack. There, there's a video where he, he throws the sword in a behemoth, and he's just casting fire spells, and it's hitting where the sword is. So I think I think that's basically so that's, like the, the, how they'll explain magic. Doing but... Evolution chains on the weapons. Right. Okay. Okay. Ooh, dark cloud. <laughs> we'll see how deep it goes. 
That would be amazing. It looks like I mean, there, there's a decent amount of customization in the demo. Yeah. With what you can do, and you, you can get. I didn't see any demo. of that, but like I was saying, graphics were were blah to me. Um, but let me say the detail. Graphics look like Grand Theft Auto to me, which I mean isn't bad, but isn't like mind blowing to me. Oh, uh, dude, um, I think the character models are way better than anything GTA has. Well, I, I agree with that. I mean, the, the no overworld. Yeah, like, the textures on stuff and like the edges. And yeah, yeah, just it just looked yeah. meh. You but, can tell that game was developed on PS3. But watch him walking out through like the woods, and he pushes the trees away, and they bend. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I think, I think that's attention amazing. to detail might be Square's new thing because it used to be okay if Final Fantasy game came out. This is going to set the benchmark for what games look like on this console. They can't do that. Anymore. They can't do that anymore because we've seen so much already. Give me a good game now. Yeah. And um, battle system, I thought was was man as well. Um, you guys explained it a little better. Uh, I wouldn't say that it really changed my mind all that much. Right, right, right. Um, I haven't touched it. I can't really say it's bad or watching it. It looks boring, but I mean, watching a turn-based, you know, battle system, it would right. probably be extremely boring as well. I, I think as as like a, a big AAA title, and I hate to say this because I love turn-based battle systems. I think that the industry has kind of passed that for a little oh, I, while. I agree. And we need to separate ourselves from the turn-based battle systems for a little while longer before they can make a great comeback. I, I I'm not ready to just abandon them yet. Yeah. Um, I'm more so thinking. Things are great on handhelds. I'm I'm waiting to find someone who can make them better, make them interesting. Um, and <laughs> that's what Final Fantasy was. It used to be. Yeah, I mean, because the active time battle system. Mm -hmm. than, so I mean, I I think that it just it's just going to take somebody with a really good idea to make that system work better, more I, modern. See, I don't I don't think there's anything they can do to it. I think it's just so many turn based. I mean, that was all there was for a while. Well, and if you look at things like Project Cross Zone. There was another game that started, I cannot remember for the life of me. My brother introduced it to me, and it was like a Japanese name for it. But that was the first game that had that like time based, turn based, like attack system. Um, that is phenomenal. And I don't think that's caught on enough here. I mean, Project Cross Zone was the only game that really showcased that here in. What, what do you mean by time based? You mean like Final Fantasy VIII? Um, kind of. Like. In, in Project Cross Zone, or like, man, I wish I could remember the name of that game. Um, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, it has something to do with robots and mechs and stuff. And it that clears it up. And it, the, the fighting system Especially is really Especially for a Japanese game. Yeah. But um, basically, you you had your two or three people, uh -huh. and you were on one side of the screen, and you took turns, um, but when that person's turn came up, you had at least like three different attacks, and each attack did something different. But you, you had to juggle your opponent sometimes. Like you, sometimes you don't want them to hit the ground so you can chain different attacks on each other. And it was all timing. Like if you had hit one too early before they got back into range, it would miss and then that would be the end of your chain. Um, but it's still a turn-based thing with like magic and you, you upgrade weapons. It's an RPG. Like it is a straight-up RPG. It's just that the turn-based combat was way more intuitive. Like you, you actually had – it was more of like a turn-based but with like a fighting game kind of style to it where you had these combos that you had to play. It was really, really cool. So like Final Fantasy VIII? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, kind of like Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> but I, I, I do, there's only two games that I know of that has really pulled any steam with that. And I'd love to see somebody else take that and make it better. So. See, I, I love the, the turn-based but time thing like – like the that Final Fantasy VIII, because you're yeah. you're freaking out. Like you're trying to go through the menus as fast as you can to get something done. Because that time, fast haste. Yeah. 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 Maybe no, the right. reason it hasn't gotten so big here is simply because America, like people in the U.S., are not willing. They get more frustrated that's, that's for that. Our they don't have the patience for that. There's a lot of videos online Excellent about point. like uh, the the the. Asian culture versus versus like the Western culture in video games, and it's yeah, I mean, it's just very very different. They're very 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 different. Like the RPG is, is a completely different genre. The Western RPG, rather. Yeah. So that's that's a really good point. Yeah, it is. I mean, when you look at them, it's it, it's as far from turn based, but like close to it as it can be. I, um, I with, have without involving that extra step. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's literally just because they most people mm -hmm. who play games in this country like they don't have the desire to get that in depth into it like most of the most times when games come out everyone blazes through them as quickly as they can because they want that best time and they they most of the time that's just 
how fast they happen to get uh, through it. Nita said another good point again. Um, Pokemon is still turn based. Yeah, it's, it's mobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, oh, I don't think you can really um, compare mobiles and consoles anymore. Um, honestly, I think consoles are just now stuck to, to mostly action and multiplayer. Well, it's a, it's, it's a very um, what's the word I'm looking for? People instant gratification. Instant gratification. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a lot of people want to invest a lot of time because they have to. People will invest a lot of time in a game like Skyrim because they want to. Mm-hmm. There aren't very many games like that anymore. I would say the last great turn-based console RPG I played was Blue Dragon 360. Uh, Tales of Asperia was on there as well. Um, those were fantastic. There was there's some on the PS3 that were pretty fantastic. The Tales um, Hyper Nep. The hyperdimensional that was now good. Now you bring it up because it, it reminded me of um, Valkyrie Chronicles. Like, do you guys count games like that Fire Emblem? Um, the, the strategy. Yeah, like is that? I mean, because I mean, you do have turns, but it's not. That's. I wouldn't it's, really it's consider that genre, turn-based so. RPG so much. It's it's strategy RPG. Um, I can't stand those games. I fucking can't stand them. <laughs> but I love turn-based. <laughs> um, some of them are all right. I just don't want to move my dudes around. I'm too lazy to move them around. Yeah, like, I don't want to do that. And then, I don't want to play chess. That's pretty much it. (laughs) Like, that's what those games are. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. kind of a a chess match. Um, I'd rather play chess with choosing my options than actually placement because, I mean, you guys have watched me play MOBAs. I'm not good at placement. (laughs) So. I've I've asked this before. I'm going to ask you again now that you've had a chance to play it or at least see it be played. Does this game, Final Fantasy XV, have any chance to be a commercial hit in the States? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think that the Western audience is so hungry for, like, another good Final Fantasy game, not to take away from any of the other that hates 13. But you don't think that the 13, 13, no. 2, 13, no. 3 has kind of, like, led to saturation as, as far as... Because it used to be every couple of years you got to kick ass Final right. Fantasy, and then we were getting one every year for a little while. And... And people were like hung over on lightning. I think this is a a or, or Square Enix's version of like um, Activision's problem, where like they would dump out a game every year and yeah. the game would blow, and right. people would still buy it because the name, the, right. the well, game. The Call of Duty. I don't even think it was. Franchise. I don't think Twelve did that well, so they they rushed on what Thirteen. Twelve didn't do that well, but it was a fucking awesome. Oh, game. it was fantastic, but a lot of people Fuck said. And um, I thought it was one of you guys that said that, but it was too linear, so they they overcompensated with thirteen, and that it, game it was, was the overcorrection. It, yeah, it, and it was just twelve terrible. was wide open with all these things to do in this big open world. So they're like, okay, you want your story based Final Fantasy? Here it is. And then I'm looking at the strategy guide for thirteen. I, I played thirteen. I didn't think it was the worst thing in the world, but I'm looking at the strategy guide and every map just goes well, like this. Even when you're walking through, your choices to make are. Are you going to go this way around this hill or this way? Like, and that's then, it. Like, <laughs> from from where you're standing, you can see where the path ends on the other yeah. side. Of the- <laughs> and, like, like there's just nothing yeah. there. I'm like, oh, I'll take that because I don't have to jump. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and you couldn't even jump. It was like a oh, yeah. thing. I forgot about that. You just went to the point and you're like, jump for it me. It finally opens up in, like, chapter 11. Yeah. You have, uh, what is it? Um, you're on Grand Pulse, the big open mm-hmm. area in chapter 11. And all you can do is just, like, they're like, oh, it opens up, and you finally get side quests, and you can play as whoever you want, and you're still doing the same leveling. That, they, they cap your leveling up to level, or chapter 11 of 13, and then all you can do is just pick up, like, like marks to kill. I'm like, oh, go kill this dinosaur, because that's my dying thing for the sea. And the, the, the game was just bad. Like, I really wanted to enjoy it. I bought it multiple Everyone times. Everyone really wanted to enjoy it. That was, that was oh, the biggest God. issue. Was... And 10 was linear, too, but even 10 had a lot 10 more. 10 was, depth. yeah, there's there's more the side quests, and right. the story was good. 13, the story was meh. Um, it didn't really change I mean, my it life got, it at all. It got super convoluted with the, the extra games. Yeah. yeah. If it was a standalone, I think it would have been, you know, standard fare. But... And, and Lightning really was Cloud. With those games. Yeah. I get really and I hate 7. Them. Like, I can't even. F- I've never finished a Final Fantasy game, and it's not even because they're bad or it, it's not. It's just that I cannot stand a game where I'm stuck sitting there grinding to beat a boss. And... Like you do, like some serious grinding within, and then, like the next like twenty minutes of the game is just a video, and that <laughs> pisses me it. off. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> pisses you know, me off. I was thinking about that with um with fifteen because they had. 
maybe one pre-rendered cutscene, like in the game. The one with uh, Sydney. No, no, because that one wasn't even pre-rendered. Well, it, it probably was pre-rendered, but like it wasn't like uh. So that it was, a, it was that shot of the of the big the sea game. and yeah. Like when they fir- when the game first starts, mm. like that was like the only like cinematic like thing that they did, because the thing with Cindy that was it was pre-rendered obviously, but it was still in in game yeah. graphics. So I don't I know. Don't, Final I, Fantasy's usually done that a lot. Like, I I I enjoy those. I like the 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 cutscenes. Um. When it's a forty to you know sixty hour game, it's okay to have the cutscenes because yeah. I'm playing it for the story. I'm not playing it because you know I want to go kill the fucking flood or something. Like <laughs> I just want to <laughs> kill the fucking flood. Hashtag kill the fucking flood. It's those little things that. Fuck hashtags, man. Screw so yeah. So hard. G- give me give me a quick yeah or nay. Is this gonna be successful? Is this gonna be great? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I still have half a chubby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear the same answer. (laughs) (laughs) I don't play them, so I mean, it won't... Final Fantasy is not my thing simply because I can't deal with cutscenes. I mean, if if it turns in... They're going to stop. They're going to be like, Alex doesn't want to play. Stop. Stop production. (laughs) You're playing that Angry Birds. I I strongly... (laughs) I, I... they won't even care. My whole and I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this. And I'm not saying those games are bad. I'm just saying I personally most likely will not play them simply because I can't play. I can't sit through a game where I have to grind through half of it and then nope. every once in a while they'll give me a break by throwing me a 20 minute cutscene. Her I can't opinion. Do it. Her opinion is really important because mm-hmm. that is the the average like the common gamer. Mm-hmm. Like that, that is the casual gamer right there. And that's how a lot of people feel. What do you think? It's right, real quick because I want to move on to the uh, the indie week. What do you think uh, is successful? Because I'll tell you, Square put out Tomb Raider. It did like four or five million copies. I thought that was pretty damn good, and they said it fell short of their expectations. Keeping, keeping in, it, it just to give you scale, 25 million is God tier, like in its heyday, Call of Duty. And, you know, eight to 10 million is what Battlefield does, and that's a crazy success. They thought Tomb Raider was going to do that. How many how many copies is it going to take to be a success? So what what would you consider a success? Here's my thing with like numbers and um, what it takes to be a success and all that fun stuff. Um, as games get better and as they they grow and we're spending more money on production, um, it, it's it's very interesting to watch people say that something that sold four million copies isn't a success because of how much money it costs to make the game. Sure. So one of two things probably needs to happen. Either A, um, this is probably the, the worst of the two, um, production cost has got to drop. Which, does that mean that we're probably not going to see as pretty games? I think that's why last the, yeah. the last console cycle was so long. Yeah, and, and the thing that sucks is we want is we want the technology to progress, but that means that these companies are having to take bigger and bigger and bigger risks. I would rather have a game that's completed than have a game that has like these amazing like current quality um, audio. And wait, no, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, video. Video. Uh, there graphics. we go. Graphics. But that was the word I was looking for. <laughs> I. And the last gaming cycle for last year didn't – all of the biggest issue with all of those games, and we've touched on this before, was that it, they weren't – they didn't feel complete. Right. And that was pro- most likely because every single game that came out last year was like, the graphics are better. That was the yeah. biggest thing. And I just, I, I just don't want developers to get caught up on make the graphics better, and then the game blows, and then it doesn't sell – and then you end up having THQ. Yes. And then another, yeah, another company goes out of business. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, back to what you were originally asking. Um, I I think that if they can sell, judge, and this is just off of this guy, and as, I'm not sure what the production cost is right now for that game either. Um, but I think if maybe they hit 15. That was my number as well. Straight up 15. 15 worldwide? Yeah. I, well, four, four, four for Tomb Raider is what? Just here? I, I don't remember if it was North America or worldwide, um, but I, I know they were talking about between four and six lifetime for it, and they said that it fell short of expectation. I think the Final Fantasy, there's there's so many Final Fantasy, I mean, whether it sucks or not, yeah. um, 
It's going to sell. It's okay. going to sell well. I'm, it has its built-in fan base, um, now it just needs to appeal to everybody else. Uh, Sealess Universe was talking about Divinity. Um, I've always seen that game on the shelf, and I want to play it. So, thanks. I'm going to try that out. Yeah, but, um, we're going to try that out. I, I have played it. You have? Yeah, Which I don't one? remember it. but oh. <laughs> We're going to try it out. But, um... I, I'm, it's it's a very like seesaw topic because for something to be considered a concept, uh, concept success off of like how many it sells because that's you're talking money that counterbalances production value. Yeah. So I mean, we want bigger okay. and better games. Yeah. We got to be a, we got to be willing to shell out bigger and better dollars. So your initial your initial impression is two thumbs up. It's definitely two thumbs up. I think if they can get out fifteen, then they'll be good. I think okay. they'll they'll be good. Um, and that's just me estimating what their production was. I, I, 15 I for 15. did have a chance to play it. I echo your sentiments. Yeah. Tell me about Indie Week. Big week coming up. Okay. Um, so, we've got a pretty cool week coming up here. Um, we While we were at PAX, we talked to a lot of indie dev, uh, developing, developing, developers. And um, we, we're going to try to... We're going to dedicate this next week, starting on the 22nd, to just indie games. Um, everything we're going to stream is going to be indie games. We're going to put out some um, uh, reviews of some stuff that we've kind of got a chance to play. Some of them have been gracious enough to give us the game before it's out, which is awesome. So we'll be able to put some video out of some of those and kind of give you our opinions, what, the, what we think. Um, pretty much everything that we we got our hands on, I already think is pretty good. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be pretty interesting. But um, I did another show that we're going to start here. It's called Sol 4. Um, it should be up probably noon tomorrow ish maybe earlier than that but um it's also going to be kicking off with indie week two um where we're just it's a it's very different than some of the stuff we put out it's it's a less it's less intent on being funny and entertaining is more informative and kind of educational on some of the things that are going on and it is going to be kind of a topical show where um it's it's based off of the things that are going on in the gaming industry but um I, I just wanted to make sure that I just wanted it to be something that you can kind of take something from instead of just kind of like oh hey ha 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 funny but um, we have that coming up but uh, yeah I mean stay tuned to like our Facebook Twitter uh, YouTube channel um, I'm gonna be putting up that software video tomorrow and then we should have some um, streaming um, I don't know what game we're gonna start off with um, probably gonna do uh, Uh, that, the, that was the, the one you mentioned. One. Yeah, we can do yeah. albino. Uh, all albino. We'll get it. We're gonna schedule up. Yeah, this we're gonna week. schedule up. I've been working on trying to update our Twitch schedule so that you guys kind of have a better like grasp of when we're gonna be on and what we're doing on each day. Um, so hopefully that'll go up this week too, so that you guys kind of have a schedule of what games are gonna be displaying each week. But um, these guys have been really, really awesome with keeping in touch with me and um, making sure I have the most updated version of their games so that we can get a chance to kind of show it to you guys. And you guys can kind of take a look and see what's going on there. So I'm really excited to go about it. Um, I know David's really excited to go about it. I know Derek's really excited about it. So um, can't wait to start. Um, and we kind of already did start yesterday, but it is what it is. So yeah, that's that's going to be pretty much Indie Week. I, I don't know if you guys have anything else that you wanted to like add on to it or something you wanted to showcase during the week. Did, did you guys get uh, – you got Brawlhalla keys, right? Yes. yes. Well, we, we got Brawlhalla um, – Keys and we also got some uh, some skins to give out too from that. I I got some keys. Yeah, I didn't get any skins. We got some keys. We got, well, I, I got, got four I got keys. The skins, you got right. the keys. There, so. that works. That works. So if that people want to play amazing, with us, by the way. Yeah. that's a lot of fun. That yeah, game is awesome. Have, have you guys ever seen anything? Nope, don't know what you're oh, talking about. I don't either. Get, give me a rundown. I, it's I it's, it's stream okay. So it's 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 basically an arena brawler, kind of like a Smash Brothers. Um, what's the best way to explain it? It's 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 like um, a two D arena brawler. Yeah, think of like a two D, um, you know, kind of the mechanics of Mega Man X, like where you kind of have like the wall slides and grabs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wall um, jumps. Yeah. But it's Smash based. You're trying to knock the other person off. Like that's pretty much the the, the gist of the game. And there's weapons and Those stuff. Those are always fun. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really really fun. I, I I enjoyed it. It was it it was at PAX last yeah. year, and I had a chance to play it. PC. And then it was there yeah. this year. It is PC. Uh, probably best played with a with a, a controller the when they demoed it they played it with an xbox 360 controller 
but it's it was a lot of fun. It was really good. We need to get a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, you you get a tablet, you play what's on the app store, and and you'd be in pretty good shape. No, tablet really gaming is there. not Skip real service. PC gaming. Well, no, but there's some really good stuff <laughs> I, on there. I would say as a, a PC gamer, I probably spend more time on on apps. But I I smoke. That's so <laughs> No, 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 I smoke. So excuses. Yeah, I I spend the time while I'm smoking playing on an app. Uh, but I I'm, I'm the opposite. I, I do not smoke and thing. pretty much everything I play is on PC. The only reason I even turn on my PS4 was for Final Fantasy. Like I haven't turned that thing on since Destiny came out. So I mean everything I play is on PC and for me it works. I don't like having the clutter. My room's already cluttered enough with games <laughs> too. But I don't like having the clutter of a whole bunch of like game cases and stuff like that. Everything's just digital. It's nice, quick, easy. I, I kind of miss that. I don't play the systems that I have, but um, I enjoy having. I want people to know that I'm a gamer when they There's walk in. There's that booth at PAX that they make uh, the the PC boxes for like digital games. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Little synopsis. I actually that. used to, to whenever I traded a game into GameStop, I would keep the case. You're one of those people. Oh, tra- <laughs> you're one of those dicks. Get out. Hate that. <laughs> Such a pain in Joe, the ass. Joe, did those interviews that we had with the developers yes. make it up yet? Um, for the, no, we haven't put them up yet. Okay, but, um, are you gonna put them up one by one? It's we're gonna like put a... them up with the games. Okay, oh, with, that's with awesome. Their that's great. So, that's great. So whenever their game comes up, we'll also put up the interview um, that we had with each of the developers. So that'll be pretty cool. That's cool. It's eleven ten. Is it? Jesus. It is eleven ten. It's that time again. There's pizza. There's pizza that, that needs eat. to be eaten. Derek, any last words? Uh, you not yet. Like he's gonna die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> after this this week of too. gaming with you guys, I will die. Um, <laughs> so make sure to watch Indie Week. My my farewell week. <laughs> what else you got for me? I've got nothing. nothing. She's got nothing. I've always got nothing. I don't even What's know why it? you guys put me on here. Oh wait, yes <laughs> I do. You make life real easy for us. Nice blanket, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> My legs are cold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joe, you got anything else for us? Parting oh, shots. Um, I appreciate all you guys that came out today and listened and whatnot. It's been awesome. Um, love to see you guys come back. And, uh, every 10 p.m. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. 10 p.m. What the fuck? Yeah, I was like, what? Every Saturday, 10 p.m. <laughs> every Saturday, 10 we do this. We'll be doing this show. We're, so. we're live for approximately an hour, maybe more. But yeah. we're, we're live all week playing these games. It will be for Indie Week this yep. week as well. Pretty much every day we're probably going to have someone on the stream playing something. Um, we may dump the videos out, like the YouTube videos out, maybe um, not every day, but I would suggest just trying to stay tuned to the Twitter or Facebook feed so you kind of know when we're coming. What is our Twitter it and is, Facebook? For Twitter, it's G underscore cube. Um, it's, uh, I'll type it in the chat here so that you guys can see it there. Um, and Facebook is literally just the same thing as G cube, uh, which you see here on the Twitch channel. Um, with the three. Thing. So would you say uh, bop the follow button? Hit that follow button. Hit like. We appreciate it. Subscribe. Sub sub. Do all those great things. All those cool social media things for us. We really appreciate it. Come have fun with us. Mm-hmm. We like to play with you guys too. Also, let us know <laughs> so what you guys so want to see on the <laughs> so social so media. Because yeah. we definitely want to be putting out things that you guys care about. Yeah. Yeah. It makes no sense for us to put out stuff. Help mold the channel. Stuff. This is your yeah. channel. Founders. <laughs> Founders Founder tattoo. pack, thirty nine ninety nine. Blizzard stuff. Founders tattoo. Let's eat some pizza. Pizza we're done. Yeah, I'm gonna eat some pizza. Um, all right. See, see, I know we're going to leave, but uh, Seeless Universe did just ask us a question. He's like, if we talk a while about PC games, um, that's actually our our primary focus. Yeah. Um. If you if you watch our our stream, it's pretty much all we do on the stream is PC stuff. We do play a lot of like console stuff in our own personal time. But as far as like the stream goes, it's pretty much always. PC. This happened oh. to be a really big week for console gaming news with right, uh, Nintendo right. and Kojima, so that kind of dominated the discussion. Final Fantasy demo coming out, so the, it, it was it was kind of a slow week uh, on the PC side. I mean, we could get into talking about uh, you know all the stuff that came out of the Nvidia conference. Right. Um, we had to make a decision on what were the what were the bigger stories, and right. if you want to hear us talk about something. Tell us to talk about it because, damn it, we're more than happy to talk about it with you. Also, speaking of console streams, um, when we're not doing things for Indie Week this week, there's probably going to be some Borderlands for for PS4 up there. It's happening. 
Um, yeah. And Bloodborne comes out, though there will probably be none of that though. No, because you don't want to. Yeah, no, I don't my, do that either. my wife, she she took over the PS4. Rude. Oh, uh, it's like it's hers or something. I understand. It is hers. I bought it for her. Okay. <laughs> do we think it's pizza time? All right. I'm so excited for pizza. Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> All right, guys, yeah, come back 10 p.m. on Saturday, next Saturday. Come say hi. Until then, talk to us on Twitter. Talk to us on Facebook. Tell us what you want to hear us talk about. More than happy to include that. And hey, this is your show too. Interact with us. Um, we're we're in the chat nonstop. If you got something to say, come help host. Pizza time. Bye. 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 Oh. Bye. oh. <laughs>